Hey, so you want to know what is GoodRx and how does it make money? Well, let's get into it. I'm Deepak Devjani. I'm a CTO and I work with founders to help build and grow their companies. In these deep talk series, we focus on some of the biggest companies today or the most innovative companies today. Um, how do they get started? How do they make their money? And what did they do to grow into the companies they are? Today's episode, we are talking about GoodRx. It's especially relevant now because they just released their 2020 revenue numbers about a week or so ago. And Amazon also recently announced that they are getting into the same game. So let's see how all this stacks up. As a quick refresher, I'm dropping in a quick uh, link uh, to a 30 second TV spot about how GoodRx pitches itself uh, for those who probably need a refresher on that. But uh, in one quick sentence, GoodRx is a uh, service that's available on web or an app that allows you to compare prescription drug prices across your local pharmacy retailers. In addition to helping you compare prices, it also has established relationships with PBMs, which are just pharmacy benefit managers, these companies that negotiate drug prices with uh, drug manufacturers. So, GoodRx allows you to compare prices, but has also established a relationship that provides you with a much discounted price for the prescription drug you need. Um, almost in many cases, 90% off of retail prices. Now, it started in 2011, and at its core, it has always pitched itself as a technology company with the mission to make healthcare affordable. So how much money does GoodRx really make? Well, their revenues have been going up pretty steadily. 2018, they almost touched 250 mil, 2019, they touched $388 million, and 2020, they crossed $550 million. So how does it make money? Well, let's get into that. Okay, GoodRx makes money four ways. Out of these four ways, one of them accounts for 88% of the revenues it brings in. That's by far the most important one to talk about. Let's talk about that. So GoodRx's bread and butter is the first one that makes it's the most amount of money, and this is their drug savings service, right? It allows you to save money on prescription drugs. So you must be asking, well, Deep, they save me a lot of money on prescription drugs, and it's a free service, so how do they make money? Well, let's say you or someone in your family needs metformin, which is the drug needed for diabetes, okay? Now, metformin, the brand, can cost anywhere between, anywhere between $640 to $700, okay, for one bottle. Now, the same one, GoodRx, when you go on GoodRx and you search for it, uh, it can end up costing you as little as $190, $180. So that's, an, that's a 70% lower, less than what you would be paying for um, uh, if you just walked into the you know, pharmacy yourself. Now this is especially useful if you don't have like insurance coverage or you know, maybe your insurance doesn't cover prescriptions or all the prescriptions, right? So especially useful there. And many people usually go at looking at those prices, they end up not getting the prescriptions at all, right? So GoodRx says that they are helping expand the number of patients that can afford to um, get, their, get the prescriptions they need. You, you use GoodRx, you walk into, it tells you which pharmacy has the lowest price and shows you a coupon to walk in and you show that coupon from GoodRx and you get that metformin bottle for um, $190, great. Now in the, in the pharmacy system, it's registered, right? You use that code. Now, because you use that code, GoodRx gets a kickback from this broker company that brokered that lower price from the drug manufacturer. So out of that $190, $180, a bunch of people made money, right? The drug manufacturer made some money, the pharmacy made some money, and this broker that negotiated the price, these, these are called PBMs, these also, they also made some money, and GoodRx made some money. Um, all from that uh, chunk. But you as an end customer, your eye, also saved a lot of money off of the retail price of the drug, um, which was anywhere between anywhere over $600. So that's how GoodRx makes the bulk of its money. Yeah. Um, great, so now let's talk about the second way. So that was the first way. Second way GoodRx makes money is subscription services. Now, in addition to just offering people one-off chances to save money on prescription drugs, they also offer a subscription membership uh, called GoodRx Gold that lets you save even more money on many of the drugs, costing anywhere between six bucks a month to ten bucks a month if you're an individual or family. They make they, that's that's one of the ways they make money. Another way they recently entered into a partnership with Kroger to also launch a prescription drug discount membership program. Cost thirty six dollars a year or seventy two dollars a year. It's for Kroger's customers and they save money on uh, prescription drugs, uh, which are also the same discounted negotiated prices that GoodRx has already you know, provided to their customers. 
like the second way. Third way it makes money. So GoodRx is trying to like is kind of grow into this company that of, that provides a lot of healthcare services, right? So it helps you save money on prescription, offers you membership to also save more on prescriptions. Now, what's the next thing people need? Well, they need access to health providers. So that's the next one that GoodRx got into. Uh, it launched a service last 2019 called Hey Doctor. Uh, recently, they rebranded re it as Good, GoodRx Care. And this is just um, GoodRx allowing customers to connect to a doctor if you need a telehealth consultation to get your prescription and all that stuff. So you can virtually chat with the doctor, they can you know, examine you and uh, write your prescription. Um, for basic things like birth control, anxiety medication, um, diabetes, acne, stuff like that. Um, telehealth is, is, one, is one that makes it the least amount of money. It's good RX's margins are pretty low on this. This is because there's a lot of competition that has come up inside this particular vertical. Uh, there are a lot of telehealth partner uh, companies that have popped up and have been growing like crazy, especially since we've all been in a, lo been in a lockdown recently for, for a while now. So there's a lot of competition here and it's really hard to kind of um, maintain margins, essentially. So that's third way. Fourth way it makes money. So this is, I think, I think personally think this is one of the smarter moves that they've made. They have, instead of just being one of the providers that provides telehealth, uh, as an offering, they've kind of opened their platform up to becoming a marketplace. So GoodRx realized they get a lot of people, like millions of people coming to their site for finding discounts or, on prescription medications. So like, well, these people need, you know, access to doctors and healthcare and labs to get tests done. But instead of GoodRx providing all those things, why not just make it a platform or a marketplace where anyone can connect with any provider? And that's what this fourth revenue stream is. Uh, it's, it's, it's a telehealth marketplace where they've, GoodRx has partnered with a lot of local providers in your zip code so that you can, you know, you can see, see who's providing what and either go to them for getting a virtual consultation. So you can also see GoodRx's care telehealth offering that you can see others also. In addition to that, you can see some others like getting, you know, like lab tests done. You want to get your, um, uh, whatever your doctor may have recommended to get tested. So for this fourth one, GoodRx makes money for directing traffic um, from its platform to these third-party um, providers. Okay, so now you know the four ways it makes money, right? Offering discounted drug prices, which they make money for every time you go use one of their coupons, um, subscription service, tele their own telehealth uh, service, GoodRx Care, and a marketplace where they get money every time you choose one of the other providers to get service from. It's clear that GoodRx is kind of disrupting the healthcare industry by providing affordable care, affordable options for people to get uh, healthcare. However, Amazon noticed this, and Amazon recently announced uh, late 2020 that they were entering the same market. They will now offer their own prescription refilling service um, to its customers, and Amazon already has a big moat of millions of um, Prime members, Prime customers who are just loyalists to Amazon, and Amazon has been known to negotiate great prices from in any industry and offer them and offer those products at much lower prices. And as soon as that news broke, GoodRx's stock dropped 22%. Right? These are all the four services that I mentioned. Amazon could easily offer them. Right? It's a marketplace. Amazon already has a marketplace product, um, connecting to other telehealth providers, uh, offering discounts on prescription drugs. Amazon seems well positioned to offer these. And if Amazon is well positioned to offer these, makes you question, well, isn't Walmart? Isn't some of the other, other providers also? Well, yeah, a lot of these big players in e-commerce are well positioned to offer things of this sort, especially, because, especially since they already have advanced logistical operations established. One of the risk factors that I want to bring up as you are looking at GoodRx, either as an investment company or uh, even just as a company to watch for, a couple of minutes ago, I mentioned these uh, PBMs, right? Pharmacy benefits managers. These kind of like companies that sit in the middle. They look at how much demand there is for a product, for a prescription drug, and then they negotiate prices or, or work with the manufacturers to kind of come up with a good fair market value price uh, or discounted price so, that, so they can increase the number of sales for the drug. There aren't that many of these companies, probably a dozen, dozen or so of them. GoodRx almost works with, all, with almost all of them. However, four, over 40% of GoodRx's revenues come from three of the biggest players that they already work with. But that's it, that's a high reliance on just a very few amount of players. Three players, three PBMs make up for over 40% of GoodRx's revenues, which make up for 88% of all the money they made. So that's a risk factor in one of those relationships that goes sour um, or not renew again. 
or if Amazon, some of the bigger players, end up signing them for an even better exclusive deal, right? At the end of the day, GoodRx is a service that aggregates prices, has negotiated prices, but that's about it. It's a great service. I personally use it. I'm a fan. Um, it continues, continues its quest to democratize um, healthcare, healthcare costs. I, I'm just not sure that their moat is that strong or that high or as defensible especially since it needs to fend off competitors like Amazon or potentially even Walmart uh, getting into space. So, well, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it gave you some of somewhat of both multiple sites to evaluating GoodRx. Now you know how it makes money and what to look for. Well, if you did enjoy it, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe uh, and share the video with someone else that you also may believe would enjoy this content. It really motivates us to keep going. Lastly, if there's any other company that you would like to know about, by all means, comment them at me in the, comment, in, the, in the section below and I'll be more than happy to cover them. Well, until next time, this is Deepak Devjani. Have a good one.